Hey guys, today I want to show you how to create a very simple hard surface object with Blender 2.8 and my add-on J Mesh Tools and then add an emissive material to the inside. Ok, so let's get started here in Blender 2.83. I press tab to switch to edit mode, I keep the default cube, press S followed by Z and scale it down like that. This is the basic shape of a kind of energy cell, a very simple hard surface model and now I go ahead and select these edges and press Ctrl and B to add bevels. And I also add a few more segments by slightly moving the mouse wheel. Ok, nice, now I go to face selection and select these faces and then I press the I key to add some insets. Ok, looks good, but I want to add another one, so I press the I key again to add another inset to this face. And now I want to select this inner ring of faces, I use here the circle select by pressing the C key. There are better ways to do this by the way, but I wanted to show here the circle select. You could for example select one face of the ring and then hold the shift key down and double click onto another face to select the whole ring, but I stick to this circle selection now to add the same selection to the other side as well. Hold the shift key down to deselect the inner face and this is finally the selection that I was going for. Ok, now I want to extrude both rings to the outside and for this I use the tool Extrude Along Normals. I drag the gizmo and move these faces to the outside. Alright, looks nice but I want the inside to be hollow. And this is very simple to do. You just select these faces here, then press the F3 key and search for Bridge Edge Loops. And that's it, now I have a hollow object. And now I want to add some holes on the left and the right side. To cut the holes into the mesh, we have to do some Boolean difference operations. And for this I'm going to use my free J Mesh Tools add-on, the link is added to the description below. But first of all we have to add the objects that we want to use as cutters. So I press Shift and A to add a cube. And then I switch to edit mode and press the S key followed by X and after that S and Y to scale it down along these axes. The part at the front I want to be rounded so I press Ctrl and the R key to add an edge loop, then switch to edge selection, select this edge at the front and press G followed by Y to move it along the Y axis and then I can press Ctrl and B to add a bevel. Ok, now we have this object to cut into the mesh. But first I have to find a matching position, so I switch to edit mode, press A to select all and then move it along the Y axis first by pressing G followed by Y and then somewhere like here where I want to cut into the mesh. You can press the G key to move around the object and with the view snapped in my case to top auto graphic you don't have to constrain the movement to an axis. Ok, that's a good position for the cut and now I add a mirror modifier here in the modifiers panel and I activate it for the X and the Y axis. After that I switch to object mode and apply the modifier. Alright, now my J Mesh Tools add-on comes into play. To execute the cut, the difference boolean, you find this here in the J Mesh panel. And first I select the target, which is the object that I want to cut into. I disable the option to apply immediately so that I can see a kind of live boolean preview after I pressed the difference button. And I'm quite happy with it, so I go ahead and apply the boolean modifier. So this is the resulting mesh of the boolean operation and another feature of the J Mesh Tools add-on is this button here which adds a nice bevel and shading for hard surface objects. Ok, now let's improve the materials and the rendering. We have the EV render engine enabled and I switch the viewport shading to rendered so that we can see a real-time render preview. I disable the scene world so that the internal HDRI is activated for lighting and I set the material to be darker and more reflective.
that looks nice and now let's add this glowing light the emission to do this i add a cube again and scale it down so that it fits into the inside of the object to scale it down press again s followed by x or y to constrain the scale to these axes Again, we can add a bevel for these edges here by pressing Ctrl and B. Okay, and now we'll show you how to create the emissive light. First of all, we have to add a new shader, an emission shader. You can select it here instead of the principal shader, which is the default. And after that, we define the color for it and the strength. The color are set to a yellow tone. I disable the overlays, we don't need them at the moment, and then I go ahead and add some post-processing effects. These effects are ambient occlusion, bloom to make the emission really shine, and also screen space reflection so that the emissive light is really reflected from the surface of the mesh. Okay, and now to let it glow, I increase the strength of the emission. Well, and that's basically it. Now you can play around with the settings, with the color, with the strength of the emission, with the different properties of the shaders and the post-processing to create really interesting effects. So guys, I hope you liked this tutorial. If you do, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you have any questions, then just add these to the comments below and I will try to answer these as best as I can. Follow me on my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Support me by being my patron, this really helps a lot. And I'll see you in the next one.